Continuous delivery is the engine that provides us with knowledge and momentum to design better products. And we think continuous design and continuous delivery are better together. Big upfront design is the enemy of continuous delivery. And I, I know that's a pretty big statement, but let me explain. Firstly, it just attempts to answer so many questions when there's so many unknowns. It, it has to rely on assumptions, which aren't much better than guesses. You, you can certainly test the design, but that's all you're testing. You're just testing the design. You're not testing actual code or software. You wouldn't buy a brand new car just on the back of reading a glossy design specification document, would you? You'd want to take it out on the road and test drive it and, uh, and take it for a spin. So it seems pretty crazy that you'd actually buy the design for a really important product for your most important customers up front without really knowing whether it's going to work for your customers. The second point I'd like to make is really related to, relates to the fact that the client in this situation has transfer, transferred all responsibility for the entire design of a really important product to an external agency. Now design is not a members only club. The design of your product is best owned by the business, not by an external vendor. We're talking about your products and your customers. They're your most valuable assets. Do you really want to relinquish control? The third point is really about just logistics. So it relates to where the designer should be located. Um, for, for continuous delivery to deliver the best results, really designers need to be sitting with the rest of their team, co-located, sitting next to the developers, in constant access to the stakeholders, and face to face with customers as well. And this is the way that they can get ideas agreed upon early on in the process rather than at the end. The relationship between continuous design and continuous delivery, so it's, it's an engine for, for getting stuff out the door. But I think what it does is it sort of begs two questions and what are you going to build once you've got this, this roaring engine of delivery? Um, and, and the second one is how are you going to create teams that are truly set up to measure and learn? I'll, I'll just sort of dive into um, how, how we kick off projects. Planning is lightweight. Uh, this is a, a plan uh, for a two-week project kickoff. Um, the basic structure is, you know, collectively understand what are the business drivers. We had to focus on the history of the project because this was complicated. Then define the customer experience. What, what proposition are we actually trying to develop? And then go into a more rational stage of story writing, estimating, and project planning. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about is that that three days of design. What could you possibly do in three days of design? Um, so. I guess I'll just jump to well, what does success look like if you've done three days of design. I think success looks like this. So that's Sarah. She's the um, project sponsor. She's standing up in front of the entire team describing the page flows, some of the sketch wireframes, a release sequence. So there's some dotted lines that define a release sequence. And she's describing that to the entire delivery team. So as a designer, I'm not pitching an idea and trying to c convince you of, of, of how great it is. The entire team has bought into the whole process, have bought into the vision, and are ready to kind of like the project has momentum. Um, so what's the process when you, know, you give it three days? Um, essentially, it looks something like this. So we spend some time on the business drivers, and then we try and describe the personas of the people that we are serving. Um, we do that together, and we do it based on past research. We, we map out the customer journey. What are the transitions, touch points? How do they actually um, uh, interact with your product? And then out of that, identify moments of opportunity or, or pain points so that you know, we, we essentially are trying to create ourselves a brief. So we describe the design challenges as how might we statements and then we level the playing field and we say we need one medium to explore stuff and that's pen and paper. So we do some learning to draw, exploratory sketching uh, which is looking at a divergent set of ideas, um, refinement sketching which is bringing it all back in and then use a design sketchboard, a giant wall to basically work through stuff, select, build and refine together. Um, again, I reckon that's pretty abstract when I'm talking about it. So I'll show you a. Um, oh, sorry, I need to go ahead. I'll show you a uh, time lapse video of um, a two-hour session that's sort of fo focused on that bottom band.
Okay, so that's me setting up the session. We've already gone through the process of defining what the design challenge is, so we've got the how might we statements. There's three teams, they're all working simultaneously and we're working against walls. Um, basically we're in that uh, refinement stage, so people are sketching at, at the larger scale. Um, as they do their sketches, they put it up on the wall and the team talks about that idea or how, how, how that might apply. What you can't hear is me just yelling at them all the time saying, you've got another three minutes, you've got another two minutes, you've got to time box everything um, so that people basically get their ideas out better. Um, and doing the sketching is only half the work, sharing it back the other half. So this is the first team presenting their ideas, gathering feedback, Sarah there, and generally just talking through what the strengths and weaknesses of the, of, of the, of the kind of direction that they've done. So that's the first team, and then we all shift over, and you can see the second team presenting. Um, Design's hard, you've got to be brave. At some point I just yell at them all and say, take everything off the walls, reconstruct it on one wall, pull together the two, because they work on two separate areas, push them together, take the best bits, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll use that as a starting point for the next round of sketching. Um, so everyone sort of stands back and goes, wow, yeah, cool. So that's, that's what one of those collaborative design sessions kind of looks like. So the output of, of that looked something like this. So, um, yeah, it was, as I said, wireframes, page flows, a description of the, um, of the release sequence, shared understanding of what we're trying to do, basically. Um, here's some other examples. The one on the left I'm most proud of because that's what the iPad team had done while I wasn't there. I turned up and I realised, wow, this method of, of, of defining the, what's going on at the interface, the experience you're trying to create, um, and using that to drive story writing and estimation had stuck. I, didn't even, I wasn't involved in that, um, and the iPad's awesome. I'll show you a quick time lapse of what an Agile team actually looks like in action. So there it is. Uh, you've got the card wall at the back, um, and you'll see a blur, and that blur is Kevin getting up, picking up cards, describing what they're trying to do, and us working really close. I mean, it's, it's close combat warfare, basically. Um, and uh, what we're doing is we are managing work in progress and filling in the details that you kind of need as we're doing it. You can see a few designs sitting around on the table. I'm putting them up and down. Um, it's, uh, that's what an Agile team looks like in action. Let's just talk through the design process for that. So in a day, we got together, the team, and started sketching out basic pages and flows. It's pretty basic, um, but we did it together. By the end of the inceptional project kickoff phase, um, we had, I'd wireframe them up a bit more, they were at a higher level of detail, and we used those for estimating best likely and worst case estimates, and that drove the story writing and estimation process. Um, still pretty rough, ignore that they've got colour, they're just basic wireframes, we're just figuring out some product stuff. Um, in, because it's a, a, a new build, you generally have, the designer generally has two to four weeks in which they have relative design freedom to do design development. So, you know, in two to four weeks we'd got to this phase which was um, really just getting a better grip on what the problem was and how, how we're going to address it in, in this environment, in, in the iPhone environment. Um, and I think later on I'm going to harp on about empathy. Um, and Empathy really is about a continuous stream of understanding and feeling the needs of your customers. And this is what empathy looks like. It is getting four users in one day per week and just never stopping. It's so easy to set up. You just get a recruiting agency, you define a profile, you pay them not very much money and they keep them coming out. And you show them whatever you've got. You show them your concepts, you show them the, the candidate release for prototyping. And I always forget to mention this, but the chaos of that uh, collaborative design video where everyone was sort of running around and, and drawing, we actually we put real people into those workshops and made the teams present their ideas. Some of them bombed, some of them didn't, but it, what it does is it keeps you honest, it keeps you grounded in the reality of a person's context. And what we're not looking for is statistical significance that our design rocks. What we're trying to do is punch holes in it, find out what's wrong and fix them early. So um, you can keep documentation super lightweight or like I did after about three weeks, just drop it completely and start just showing the post-it notes from the sessions to the devs and you know, adjusting the backlog uh, based on that. So you know, after 12 to 16 weeks, you might come out with a release. That was the release one, looking awesome. Um, and um, we then rolled on, rolled on to sketching out some concepts for the next phase um, and uh, rolled into release two. So, what I do know is that no designer, I don't care how they good, good they are, could ever have specified this application up front. It just couldn't have happened. The transitions, the, the interactions, um, 
it's, it's, it's complex and, and, and impossible to do. And what I know is that the, the iOS guys were guns. They, they were as much a part of the design as I was. In fact, I started worrying less about interaction design and more about creating empathy with, with the customers and, and driving the, the business needs. Um, so that's a case study uh, about at a sort of build phase.